Hi, my name is Sarah Fitzgerald, and my presentation is called Vector Space, Faces, and Dimension. Well, by the end of my presentation, you will understand vector spaces and subspaces. You'll understand what a basis of a vector space is. And by doing that, you will understand what linearly independent means and what a spanning set is. You'll also understand and be able to calculate the dimensions of a vector space over the field. So before we begin with any of those goals, I wanted to talk about what a vector is. A vector has a magnitude and direction. It tells you where to go and how far to go. And because of this, I like to think of it as a journey, which is the theme of my presentation. So I want you to take a close look as um, I rotate from slide to slide that we are taking a journey. So there's several ways to um, write the notation for vector. You can write it as a bold V. You can write it with parentheses. You can write it with caret signs on both sides. You can write it as um, like a V or a lowercase letter with an arrow above it. And you can also write it as a matrix. And one example I'm going to give you is the vector 4, 5, as shown in green on my graph. And again, vector tells me where and how far to go. Now that we know what a vector is, I'm going to talk about what a vector space is. It's a set of vectors that's an abelian group under addition. It um, has two distributed properties as shown um, right here, and it has an associativity property. It also has the multiplicative identity. And I just want to note that when I say vector addition, I mean the first operation of my group. And when I say vector multiplication, I mean the second operation of my group, meaning that um, my group's operations does not necessarily need to be addition and multiplication. Um, so I'm going to move on to an example. We have the example of r to the n. And due to time and wanting to focus on some other things, um, I'm going to leave this problem for you to um, solve that it is a vector space. Um, and then a non-example is a set of vectors that only lie in my first quadrant right here. These five red vectors are only five examples of this set of vectors. If I drew all of them, my whole first quadrant would be full of red. However, the other two, three quadrants would be blank as seen here. This is not a vector space because it doesn't have um, the additive inverse, which is needed to be an abelian group. And because that one property does not hold, this set of vectors that only lie in our first quadrant is not a vector space. So again, a vector space needs to be a abelian group under the first operation. It needs to have two distributed properties as shown in number two, and it needs to have the associative associativity property as shown in also number two, and it needs to have the um, multiplicative identity. Now that we know what a vector space is, we can talk about what a vector subspace is. It's basically also another set of vectors it, that is a subset of our vector space. And our, um, our w, I'm, as denoted in the slide, needs to also be a vector space. To show these two things, that takes a lot of steps. So uh, from a theorem, um, you can show that if a set of vectors um, is closed under addition and closed under scalar multiplication, um, also it needs to be a subset of our vector space, then that um, set of vectors is a vector subspace. So one example is um, the set of vectors that um, are notated as x comma x, um, where x is a real number. And this set of vectors can um, be shown in my graph on the right on that red line. Um, and this red line will continue out um, for all of the real numbers. So any vector in my vector um, subspace here is, um, lies on that red line. And this is a vector subspace because it is close under addition.
you can add any two of those vectors and it will still lie on that red line. Um, and we'll, in other words, we'll still be in our um, set of vectors. And also if you multiply a real number by any of our vectors, it will still lie on that red line. And another way to think about it is to be in our set of vectors. So now that we know those things, we can move on to linear combination. We need to know a linear combination so that we can understand basis and therefore understand dimension. So I've written a linear combination is any vector that can be written as all elements of our vector space and some of the elements um, of our field. And when we write it as shown over here, a1 times v1 plus a1, a2, v2 plus da 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 plus a sub k v sub k, we're going to get a new vector. And again, this has to be all, you have to use all of your vectors in your vector space. Um, so we're going to take a set of vectors, negative 2, 3, and 4, 5. Our field is going to be the real numbers. The vector negative 2, 3 is shown right here, this little red arrow. Um, and the vector 4, 5 is shown in the screen arrow, the shorter of the two. Um, I'm going to use vector scalar multiplication um, when doing 3 times negative 2, 3 to get this long vector, long red vector. I'm going to do, again, vector scalar multiplication of 2 times 4, 5 to get this long green um, vector. Then I'm going to use vector addition and get this blue line, this blue vector, which is 2, 19. Now that we've covered linear combination, we can talk about the basis of a vector spaces. We're going to let V be our vector space and S be our set of vectors that is a subset of our vector space. Is, um, our set of vectors, S, is a basis of our vector space if and only if S is linearly independent and S spans V. So now we're going to look more specifically as to what linearly independent and what spanning means. Linearly independent means that there's only one way to write a linear combination to get to the zero vector. So, and that way is if um, all our coefficients, meaning all our the elements in our field, they have to be zero. That's the only way to get to that zero vector. If we can use um, other real numbers, or I guess other elements in our um, field, um, to get to that zero vector, then that means um, this set of vectors is linearly dependent because there's other ways to write a linear combination to get to that zero vector. So I just want to reiterate that linearly independent means there's only one way to get to that zero vector and that's if um, all our elements in our field are zero. So we're going to use our example we've been using, um, negative 2, 3, and 4, 5. I'm going to set up a linear combination, x times negative 2, 3 plus y times um, 4, 5. I'm going to use vector scalar multiplication and vector addition to get the vector negative 2x plus 4y, 3x plus 5y. I'm going to set that equal to 0, 0, because that's my um, 0 vector. Um, and then using systems of solving equations, I'm going to find that for this example, um, my x and y have to be 0. There's no other way to get to that 0 vector. So now I'm going to talk about what it means to span. Spanning is the set of all finite linear combinations of S that hit every element in V, our vector space. So we're going to take our example again, um, 4, 5, and negative 2, 3. If you see um, this green line here, that represents all possible vectors from the vector 4, 5. In other words, I can um, multiply it by any scalar, um, add them together, and I'm going to get vectors that lie on this green line, and it'll keep going out. Um, the same goes with this red line. 
to represent all possible vectors from negative 2, 3. And then if you switch your attention to the graph on the right, you'll see all these blue lines. These blue lines represent um, some of the linear combinations. The one right here that I'm following along, um, more specifically if it goes up here, we saw that that was my um, previous example um, when I did a linear combination. I got the vector 2, 19. Um, so this line represents that. If I choose any other real number, I'm going to get some of these blue lines. And if I do all the possible linear combinations, I'm going to find that my whole graph is going to be covered in blue because all my um, linear combinations will hit all of the elements in R2. And this will take a lot of um, work to show. Um, and so there's another way we can show that um, this spans R2 is if the determinant um, of these set of vectors, because it is a square matrix when we put these two vectors together, if that determinant is not equal to zero. So that's a quicker and easier way to find it, but you aren't always given going to have a square matrix. Or there's a possibility. Um, so since my set of vectors, um, negative 4, 5, or sorry, my set of vectors 4, 5, and negative 2, 3 can hit every element in R2 um, with all the possible linear combinations created. That means my set of vectors, 4, 5, and negative 2, 3, spans R2. So just to summarize what a basis of a vector space is, it's um, a subset of our vector space. And um, it is generally independent, and it spans all of our vector space. So we've been using the example 4, 5, and negative 2, 3. Uh, and we just showed that it spans all of R2, which is our vector space, and it is linearly independent because there's only one way to get to that zero vector, and that is if all the coefficients, all the elements in our IR field are zero. And because of those two things, um, my set of vectors, negative 2, 3, and 4, 5, it is a basis of R2. So now that we've talked about a basis of a vector space is, we're going to use that knowledge to um, understand um, the dimension of a vector space. Is. So the dimension of a vector space is the maximum number of linearly independent elements of our vector space. In other words, the size of the basis or the number of vectors that make up the basis. The notation of the dimension of vector space is DIM or DIM. Um, sub f, meaning our field, and then a big V for our vector space. So I'm going to give you one example is the um, set of zero vectors. Um, and the dimension is that of that is zero. That's the only um, case where the dimension is zero. Now we're going to move on to the dimension of the set of vectors we just worked with, negative 2, 3, and 4, 5. Or I should say the dimension of our vectors, the vector space we just worked with, which is, was R2. We found that the set of vectors, negative 2, 3, 4, 5, is a basis of our vector space, R2. And because it only had two vectors that made up that dimension of that basis, the dimension of that vector space is 2. And then you can generalize um, the dimension of r to the n will be n. That is because it is well defined. And due to time constraints, I'm going to leave that to you to solve. So in this presentation, we talked about what a vector space is, a basis, and dimension. So just to review, a vector space um, needs to be in Abelian group under the first operation. And you said those two distributive properties and the associativity properties. And it needs to have a multiplicative identity. Then we need to know, we're going to use vector space to find the basis of our vector space. So a basis of a vector space is, it needs to be a subset of our vector space. 
It is nearly independent, meaning there's only one way to get to that zero vector, and that's it. Only using the elements in our field that are zero. Then it also needs to span our vector space. It means all the possible linear combinations result in hitting all elements in our vector space. And then knowing or finding what the basis of a vector space is, we can find the dimension of a vector space because the dimension is the size of the basis or the number of vectors that make up our basis. So thank you for coming and listening to me talk today.